Good evening, I'm Andy McCarter, uh, class of 1986. I've got the pleasure of serving as the president of the Memphis University School Alumni Executive Board. And I'd like to welcome Dr. Dahl and his family, our distinguished faculty and faculty emeriti, alumni and special guests to the unveiling of the 15th portrait and a series of faculty portraits that are on display here in the dining hall. The portrait series was created by the Alumni Executive Board in 2005 to honor MUS faculty members who have dedicated their lives serving our great and beloved school. They've been, uh, there's been many changes in the appearance of the school, as you can see, and uh, in the campus over the last two decades, but these portraits uh, serve as a daily reminder to alumni, students, faculty, and friends that even though the school's physical appearance may change over time, our faculty have been unchanging in their steadfast commitment to provide the highest quality teaching and experience to our students. Something that alumni treasure for a lifetime. Uh, simply put, our faculty are the foundation upon which the excellence of MUS rests. The alumni board determined the criteria for selecting each faculty portrait recipient to qualify, nominees cannot be current members of the faculty, and they must have served MUS for a minimum of 15 years. Not surprisingly, there's a remarkably high number of faculty who meet this criteria. Clear evidence of the high level of dedication and commitment that our faculty have to this school. And having personally been part of many of these nomination meetings, I can say that there is a very impressive list for us to choose from. The discussions prior to voting are always engaging and thoughtful, and often the voting goes on for several rounds. So what I'm saying is, it is no small feat to end up on these walls. This evening we are here to honor longtime teacher, Dr. Reginald Alphonse Dahl whom the Alumni Executive Board selected as this year's subject in the series. In a moment, you will hear how Dr. Dahl profoundly influenced MUS, his students, and fellow faculty members. As Latin instructor Trey Sudarth once said, Reginald chose to dedicate his life to making other people better. What greater measure of a human being can there be? Along the way, he has been a noble ambassador for French language and culture to MUS. On a personal note, I never had the pleasure of taking French from Dr. Dahl or the good fortune to travel with him to, for uh, MUS in Europe. I was, however, quite impressed with the fact that he owned La Baguette, <laughs> the French bistro known for the best declares in town. And as such, was a frequented locale for our senior dining out privileges no doubt a huge upgrade over whatever daily fare was being served in Colonel Lintai's cafeteria. <laughs> I also have to admit that in my earlier years, I was convinced that MUS was such an esteemed institution that it somehow convinced Peter Sellers to come teach here. <laughs> I would often linger outside Dr. Dahl's class room just to hear him talk. And for you millennials out there, just Google the original Pink Panther. Okay? <laughs> our first speaker this evening is our headmaster, Peter D. Sanders. Pete is now in his third year at MUS, where we are benefiting from his more than three decades of experience as an independent school educator and administrator. At his core, Pete is a teacher. In addition to his myriad duties as headmaster, he also teaches a section of U.S. history to freshmen. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me welcoming our distinguished headmaster, Pete Sanders. Thank you, Andy. Uh, this is my third year, and this has quickly become one of my favorite uh, events at the school. Uh, when I interviewed here, well, almost three years ago, I was brought into this room for what was sort of a clandestine tour of the campus and it was darkened uh, here in this big room. But what struck me right away were these portraits. And I took a little more time in this room, I think, than my tour guide wanted because I looked at them and read the, read the uh, little plaques underneath them. 
And to me, that sent an incredibly strong message about what this school is all about. It values teachers and the teaching process and the dynamic that goes on in the classroom. And to me, I was, I was sold at that point because to me that just said this school understands what is important. And to this uh, ceremony today is going to be an occasion in which we further validate what goes on in the classroom. And I'm excited about it. I, of course, uh, knew of Dr. Dahl to his son, Eric, who is continuing his, the Dahl legacy here at uh, MUS. But I did, uh, in the case of uh, your portrait, Dr. Dahl, I got to sit in on the meeting in which there was discussion. I got to meet the, the artist, and I also got to see you pose for the painting. And, but I have not seen the final product yet, so I'm looking forward to that. But before we get to that, I do want to give, uh, provide a background and a little bit of a biography of what you did at, at what you did at MUS and why you mean so much to our uh, graduates and your former students. I'll probably not cover everything. There's some French in here, so don't cringe with my pronunciations. I practiced. Rebecca helped me. Ms. Keel helped me, so we'll see how we do. But you were at the school for 30 years as an MUS French instructor. You're, of course, now a French teacher emeritus. And you taught every level of the language uh, from starting in the fall of 1981 to August 2011. And for 17 years, you were chairman of the foreign language department from 1992 to 2009. In 1999, you were the recipient of the Distinguished Teaching Award. Uh, you also received the Loyalty Award from the Tennessee Association of Independent Schools and also the 25-year Service Award in Honorary Alumni Status. You were the longtime advisor to the French Club. You also were the former coach of our JV soccer team. Uh, you were noted for your uh, numerous times as a uh, chaperone uh, to events such as Latin tournaments, Model UN meetings, youth legislature events. And of course, in 1999, you and Coach Bill Taylor uh, were the creators of one of the best uh, study abroad programs uh, in high school, uh, for high schools, MUS in Europe, which has just become a mainstay of our academic program. Uh, and you even shared your family, family's beautiful home in the Loire Valley. Uh, the home is called Le Gardier. I took Spanish. Jordier. I'm getting there. Okay. I'll keep trying. On, other, on another front, you're noted for being a jubilant ambassador of French culture. You're the former vice president of the Alliance Francaise of Memphis. In 1990, you were named the Chevalier dans l'Ordre du Palme Académique, an honor bestowed by the French government for the promotion of French language and culture. Recognized by all for epitomizing many wonderful qualities, including gentlemanly virtues of truth and honor, hospitable largesse and courtesy, humility of service, especially when you were hosting MUS gatherings at your house in France, you were noted for cutting cantaloupe for breakfast, insistently refilling guests' beverages, slicing bushels of baguettes, hanging laundry to dry, and much, much more. Perspondifying, especially to those fortunate to have visited your house in France, the ideals of what Chaucer has called a vrai parfait gentle night. Innumerable contributions also are in your resume for what you did as a teacher, host, and friend here at, at uh, MUS. And needless to say, it's easy to surmise from this long list of bullets that uh, you also advance international education at the school in a big way. And for that, we're greatly appreciative. On a CV note, your BA uh, you received from the University of Memphis and a PhD from the University of Arizona. You're the husband, Teresa, father of Dr. Eric Dahl in class of 93 who's a French and English uh, instructor and has been here since 2012, and Emily Dahl-Wedek. And you are the grandpa to Claire, Sophie, and Leonie. 
Congratulations, Dr. Dahl, on this wonderful tribute to your life's work here at MUS. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Our next speaker is Mr. Preston Battle, a member of the class of 2007. Preston was an active leader at MUS. In addition to being a student of Dr. Dahl's, he was involved in theater, sang with Beg to Differ, and served as president of the student council. At graduation, he received the William D. Jemison III Award for Excellence in Dramatics. Preston continued his studies at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, where he received a bachelor's degree in French language and literature. He then spent a year in France teaching English. And after coming home, he enrolled at the University of Memphis Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law and is now a litigator with the Baker Donaldson Law Firm. Ladies and gentlemen, Preston Battle. Thank you for that kind introduction. Soyons reconnaissants aux personnes qui nous donnent du bonheur. Elles sont les charmants jardiniers par qui nos âmes sont fleuries. Translated into English, this proverb by Marcel Proust says, let us be grateful for the people who give us joy, for they are the charming gardeners who make our souls blossom. I give this speech today to honor one of the most important gardeners in my life and in the lives of generations of MUS alumni, Dr. Reginald Dahl. I don't have any children of my own, but I have worked as a school teacher. And as any parent or teacher knows, when it comes to young people, you can plant seeds, but you won't know just what you've sown until the seed is nearly grown. The last part of that sentence, of course, comes from the Fantastics, so shout out to Flip Eigner uh, for that. Thank you. Um, however, this principle does work going the other way. In growing up, you don't know which people, experiences, or phases of your life are going to be the most formative and shape you into the adult you become. For me, four years of French class at MUS and a trip to France with Beg to Differ after my sophomore year just so happened to be two of the most formative experiences of my life. First, I want to talk about French class and Dr. Dahl at MUS. French was by far my favorite class at MUS because it was the only class in which I could run my mouth the entire time and it actually be a productive exercise. <laughs> Dr. Dahl was the perfect combination of being an effective, animated educator and being completely, utterly silly at times. This was perhaps best reflected in the educational television series that jo Dr. Dahl used to teach us French called French in Action, which was a kind of surreal, borderline absurd romantic comedy that followed the fictional relationship of Robert, an American uh, foreign exchange student, and Mireille, the crush of every French student from 1986 to 2011. <laughs> Learning French far from France, Dr. Dahl did a remarkable job in immersing us in French language and culture. He had French culture magazines for young people delivered to the school for us. He taught us all about French society and government, and he introduced us to cult classics in French cinema like Jean de Florette, The Count of Monte Cristo, Le Huitième Jour, Les Visiteurs, and my all-time favorite French film, Le Dîner du Camp. And in starting to learn language, a foreign language at such a young age, Dr. Dahl understood the importance of introducing us to the French language through l'oreille, by having us record dictations of ourselves speaking French, converse with each other in French, and having us listen to native French speakers as much as possible. Of course, no day in French class was more highly anticipated than the day on which Dr. Dahl taught us des gros mots, or <laughs> curse words in French. You understood it a little bit before. Um, which, of course, is an important lesson in learning just about any foreign language, um, but especially la langue française. Speaking from personal experience, cussing in just about any foreign language is, is very fun, but there's just something about cursing in French that makes it exceptional. Um, there's a very famous line in the film, The Matrix Reloaded, uh, for you uh, not millennials. Um, and there's a computer program called the Merovingian, and he describes how he sampled every human language before taking human form. French, he says, is a fantastic language, especially to curse with. It's like wiping with silk. I love it. <laughs> Perhaps Dr. Dahl, I won't say those words, but um, perhaps Dr. Dahl 
understood that the most effective way to plant seeds in the minds of young men is to never be too serious to uh, not inject a moment of levity into any given situation. I will never forget, during the Freedom Fries movement, during which many Americans renamed French fries in response to the late Jacques Chirac's famous opposition to the U.S. invasion of Iraq, Mr. Bill Matthews, a former science teacher here at MUS, in this room got up and screamed right as he was leaving the dining hall. He said, and remember kids, they're not French fries, they're freedom fries. <laughs> Everyone froze on Mr. Matthews, then slowly turned back to the faculty lunchroom table to look at Dr. Dahl. <laughs> Without missing a beat, Dr. Dahl stood up from the faculty lunch table and gave Mr. Matthews the bras d'honneur, or... <laughs> which, of course, made the entire dining hall erupt in laughter. Another fond memory that I have is the time that I enrolled Dr. Dahl to walk out on stage during a basketball homecoming pep rally and shoot me, the student council president, with a blank gun while screaming Six Semper Tyrannis, which of course Booth screamed before shooting Lincoln. I'm pretty sure it was the first time that Dr. Dahl, a pacifist, had ever fired a gun before because of how nervous he was holding the gun backstage, um, which provided endless entertainment for me. My brother, who was in the class of 09 and also loved French class, often tells me that one of his favorite memories at MUS is when he and his friends were filming a homecoming video in which Dr. Dahl and Mr. Large had an epic lightsaber duel reminiscent of the Duel of the Fates in Star Wars Episode I. There are countless other stories, but the point is that Dr. Dahl's impact on the lives of generations of students at MUS extends far beyond the French classroom tucked away in the sophomore hallway at MUS. In addition to his monumental influence on all of his former stu uh, French students, one of his greatest gifts to the MUS community is found in the Dahl home in the Loire Valley called the Chateau de la Giraudière. For the last 21 years, um, and even well after his retirement from MUS, Dr. Dahl has graciously allowed MUS, the U MUS family, to use La Giraudière as the home base for MUS in Europe and to other members of the MUS family. Over those years, MUS students, teachers, and parents have been fortunate enough to go on life-changing trips to this very, very special place. While I'm sure that each former student has his own special story or memory about his time spent at La Girardière, I'm honored to share my own with you today. In 2005, after my sophomore year, I traveled to France with Beg to Differ. It was my first time in Europe, and I was eager to be in France after having completed and loved French 2 with Dr. Dahl. I will never forget pulling up to La Jordière in our big concert bus and being completely blown away by the beauty of its three-pointed gabled slate roof and the awning balconies on its facade, which is completely covered in ivy. As everyone who has stayed in La Girardière with MUS can tell you, the first morning there is both disorienting and magical. Everyone on my trip was lying in their beds, uh, lying soundly asleep when La Réveille came blasting through our bedrooms and woke us up in a full panic. I remember running out to see who or what could possibly be making this much noise to find Dr. Dahl blowing the trumpet at the bottom of the stairwell on the first floor. I remember him looking up at me when he stopped and laughing, letting out a sly smile, and then turning to his record player and putting on Harry Belafonte's Angelina at full volume. Um, which filled the house with energy and kind of turned it into a Beetlejuice remake. <laughs> we all came downstairs to find Dr. Dahl putting the last touches on our breakfast, which was served in a room with its French doors and shutters opened up to the most gorgeous, picturesque view of the French countryside in the distance. Of course, no story about La Girardière would be complete without Bruno, Dr. Dahl's late brother. In all honesty, Bruno Dahl might need to get his own faculty portrait at MUS one day. <laughs> God knows he put in enough years. Together, Dr. Dahl and Bruno taught the Beg the Differ boys how to play pétanque, toured us around the incredible grounds at La Girardière and the neighboring villages, and listened intently as we would rehearse in the piano room of the house for up to two hours a day. One of the songs that we sang that summer, from castles and music festivals to cathedrals, including the Notre Dame de Paris, was Du France by Charles Trenet. Bruno, speaking in a mix of French and English, explained to us how the lyrics of the song 
uh, were a nostalgic resistance piece that helped the French get through the occupation, um, which really gave a lot of meaning um, to the words that we were singing out on the streets of Paris, Cholet, Angers, and on. On our last night at the Chateau, Dr. Dahl and Bruno hosted some of the local townsfolk and a guest jazz band that performed side by side with Beg de Differ. And the evening culminated in an incredible jam session between the two groups, with several of my more courageous bandmates and I acting as backup singers for the band, scatting and riffing with the uh, singers late into the night. However, perhaps the most formative moment of the trip and one of the most meaningful moments of my life was our concert at Notre Dame. It was not until years later that I learned that Dr. Dahl, and learned not from Dr. Dahl, but that Dr. Dahl had been planting the seeds for months to get us the concert gig at Notre Dame, making calls, leaning on connections, and there was more than one time that the concert almost fell through. On the day of the concert, Dr. Notre Dame was full of people, and while it, was a, it is a very holy space, it was quite noisy before we started singing. After we started, however, everyone in the cathedral became silent and slowly made their way to the nearest seat to watch us perform. We closed that concert by singing Precious Lord by Thomas Dorsey, and in the words of the late, beloved John Hilton Smith, by the time we got to Notre Dame, the students were no longer singing the notes, but every single member of the group was a voice for the person who had written the music. By the end of the song, I was uh, overcome with emotion and, and crying. I looked at some of my bandmates, they were also crying, and then I looked out at the crowd of people at Notre Dame, and they were also overcome with emotion and crying. Many years later, after I had obtained my degree in French literature from the University of Tennessee, and was living and working in the south of France in Nîmes as an elementary school English, uh, English teacher, I attended Bruno Dahl's funeral at the Père Lachaise Cemetery in the 20th arrondissement of Paris which is the final resting place of many of France's most celebrated and revered figures. On my way back to Nîmes on the TGV, with the rolling hills of the French countryside whizzing by me at 180 miles an hour, I reflected on how grateful I was to have taken French at MUS with Dr. Dahl, to have spent that summer in France with Begda Differ, and just how much Reginald Dahl has enriched my life by cultivating in me a love of seeing the world through another language, another culture, and another way of thinking, ultimately, and the friendships that I've made along the way. Dr. Dahl, de la part des générations des anciens élèves des MUS, on se rend compte de la richesse que vous nous avez apportée, et on, est, on vous en est reconnaissant. On vous remercie pour vos années de service à la famille des MUS. Votre héritage est tout à fait incommensurable, mais ce portrait C'est une épreuve de notre reconnaissance en vous. Vous avez vraiment mérité cet honneur immense et je souhaite ces félicitations à vous et à votre famille aussi. Merci. Next, we're going to hear from a colleague and compatriot of Dr. Dahl, Mr. Bill Taylor, probably better known as Coach T. He began his tenure at MUS in 1976 and has taught biology to generations of MUS students, including myself. He holds the Ruth McCon Morrison Chair of Science, and in 2002, he was honored by his faculty colleagues with the Distinguished Teaching Award. Bill has also served as the varsity tennis coach for well over 30 years, guiding his players to a boatload of championships and earning the Commercial Appeals Coach of the Year honor again this year for the 16th time in his career. In addition, he contributed immensely to the cultural education of countless students by joining forces with Dr. Dahl to revive the MUS in Europe program some 20 years ago. Together they led hundreds of boys on fantastic trips abroad that generally included a memorable stay at Dr. Dahl's family home, of which I am not going to attempt to pronounce. Uh, please welcome to the podium Coach T. Reginald Dahl was one of the great legendary MUS teachers. When Reginald joined the faculty, some viewed him as a type of French knight, a Lancelot, because of his civility. Others saw Reginald as a James Bond figure, <laughs> a man of mystery that had just flown in from the Mediterranean. <laughs> he was worldly. He carried himself differently. 
He could wear an ascot and get away with it. <laughs> he seemed to have diplomatic immunity when he would unleash his signature blend of French, of the French, English, and sign languages to emphatically drive home a point of contention with the student. <laughs> and others would see the character Luke from the movie Cool Hand Luke in Reginald. All knew that Reginald was special, that he had a certain something something, a certain <laughs> je ne sais quoi. <laughs> the reality is that Reginald was a hard-working, charismatic, and proud French immigrant who had earned a PhD in French literature here in the United States and would eventually teach at the University of Memphis and then later, luckily, luckily for us, would land on the shores of Memphis University School and become one of the school's most respected and beloved teachers. Reginald is part of a large, interesting family from the north of France where his father was the mayor of a small town and owned a paper mill. Reginald had seven, excuse me, 12 siblings and he was the seventh son. His brothers and sisters would become famous Parisian psychiatrists, inventors. One would, one would become the president of L'Oreal in Canada. And of course, Bruno, who most of you know, would become a journalist who interviewed the likes of Churchill, de Gaulle, and Nixon. Bruno was the only French journalist that Winston Churchill would allow to interview him. Bruno would later become the director of Tour de France Bicycle Race. More importantly, Bruno would team up with Reginald, become the quintessential hosts and guardians for the MUS and Europe family of students and faculty living and studying at Le Jordiere. Today, when the Dolls have a family reunion, as many as 75 people will celebrate at their beautiful home. Reginald has lived a colorful life, but you would never know it about it unless you happen to ask the right question. At 19, Reginald was drafted into the French Army and eventually stationed in Algeria. It was a turbulent time in that country, and Reginald was an uncomfortable witness to some horrific military atrocities. And because of a disrespectful remark made to an officer, Reginald ends up in a military prison with a mix of other Europeans, North Africans, and various political prisoners, mostly communist school teachers. All of that was okay, and according to Reginald, offered him a, a different, well-articulated view of the world. Reginald still keeps in touch with some of these men, but on the other hand, Oh, but on the other end of the spectrum, there is a crazy prison doctor doing bizarre experiments involving some of the inmates. Strange rituals were performed every Friday night. It was a nightmare, and Reginald was willing to do anything to get out of prison and the Army. Reginald's time in this prison sounds a little bit like MUS's supervised study sessions. <laughs> really. The infamous S cubed, where our own boys will also do just about anything to get out. <laughs> Reginald did get out by starving himself, faking an appendicitis, and persuading a doctor to remove his perfectly healthy appendix. Apparently, the French military places a high premium on the appendix. <laughs> Reginald was given a 30-day leave from prison and spent that time relaxing and sailing in the Mediterranean with, a, <laughs> with an uncle before returning to prison, a hero, like Cool Hand Luke to the other inmates. He had, for the moment, beaten the man. Months later, Reginald was out of prison and the army, lying in bed in Paris with two broken legs, the result of a car accident when he received an invitation from a cousin passing through Memphis to join him. Shortly after that, Reginald would be walking on Beale Street. While in graduate school, Reginald developed the idea of opening a French bakery in Memphis. He interviewed French experts about every aspect of the baking business and brought the best French specialists to Memphis to help set up the enterprise. Headmaster Gene Thorne gave Reginald his blessing and allowed Reginald to work full-time at MUS and to continue working in the, in the bakery. 
Later, Reginald also had an enterprise linked to a radio station in Helena, Arkansas, where people primarily from the Mississippi Delta would come to record their music and then be given a stipend and a copy of the recording. Some of the recordings would eventually be used by National Public Radio here in the States, and other recordings were sent to France and China. Of course, Reginald is known for his pivotal role in the MUS in Europe program, which is in its 21st year. The program is designed to expose MUS students to European culture, give them the chance to earn academic credit, and allow interested faculty the opportunity to generate and develop creative courses that could be taught abroad. To date, 32 different faculty and more than 500 students have participated in the program while visiting 13 countries. This past summer, Eric Dahl, Dr. Dahl the Younger, led a group of 26 students to Germany and France to study the origins of cinema. It was 1999 when Dr. Dahl opened the doors to his home, Le Jordier in the Loire Valley of France with the support and encouragement of Ellis Haywood and the seed uh, for the MUS in Europe program had been planted. Le Jordier has huge, stately, exotic trees, part of an older arboretum. It has beautiful open, it has beautiful open Byzantine barn, cool nights, mild days, places to study, and open spaces for the boys to play. There's a huge yellow kitchen with a large oak table in the center. The table is where every guest was made welcome. It was where strategy was discussed. It was, was where homeostasis, homeostasis could be reestablished. <laughs> Trey Sodarth believed that the Axis Mundi passed right through the middle of the table because of all the activity revolving around it. Reginald worked tirelessly to make the MUS in Europe experience the best. He'd be the first up in the morning preparing breakfast for 25 plus people. He would then stand at the bottom of the spiral staircase and blow his French horn to call the hounds to eat. <laughs> Some version of this would occur for every meal on every day the boys were at the Jordier. If a boy had a birthday, a spectacular taste in cake would always appear, followed by a celebration with Reginald leading a conga line, snaking his way through the barn and out onto the grounds. Requests from boys for guitars, bikes, soccer fields, basketball, frisbees, badminton courts, a beach volleyball court and barbecue, along with requests from teachers for meals outside the barn, in the back of the barn under the grapevines, by the chapel, in front of the house, in the back of the house, or by, or by a bed of red poppies were all graciously accepted. Like the places described in Nat Aiken's 2006 course, creative spaces, the importance of place in the modern imagination. Le Jordier worked his way into the imagination of those who had stayed there as part of the MUS in Europe program. The genius of the place, Mr. Eichner's 2008 course, explored the Roman idea that each physical place is the outward manifestation of some presiding spirit or guardian deity that inspires and animates Reginald has done just that. He has inspired and animated all of us, students, faculty, friends, and even fellow inmates. <laughs> Reginald is the magic that made Le Jordier a unique and memorable experience. Reginald was part of the MUS pantheon of talented and dedicated teachers that have made this school one of the special places, especially for boys. Trey Sutter said that Rachel Dahl was the window to the world, world for him and others. I agree. Rachel was the one who suggested to me just how good a radish on a piece of French bread with sea salt and butter could be. Rachel loves the circus, and one of the things that he wanted to do when he retired was to have the experience of traveling with a circus for a whole year. I told Reginald if the circus idea falls through, he is always welcome to visit my Friday afternoon seventh period biology class. <laughs> Reginald is special. We are lucky to have him as a teacher or as a friend or both. Please join in this iconic Le Jordier celebration for Reginald. 
Lynn Askew has kindly agreed to lead the way. So. Coach T, I don't think I've seen you incite that much excitement in a group of people since the last time you showed Ingrid and Eric to biology class. Thank you, Coach, for your comments. Our portrait of Dr. Dahl is by celebrated artist Grace DeVito, who studied at the School of Visual Arts in New York City, majoring in illustration. After a decade of working for such clients as the United Nations, Sony and PepsiCo, she left the commercial art field to pursue fine art painting. She has completed portraits for such clients as Villanova University, the City of Cambridge, Massachusetts, the University of North Carolina, the University Hospitals of Case Western Reserve, and many private collections, now including Memphis University School. Unfortunately, Ms. DeVito could not be with us this evening uh, she is represented locally by Mrs. Elizabeth Francis, a broker for Portraits Incorporated. But I do have a telegram to read you, Dr. Dahl, from Ms. DeVito. Dear Dr. Dahl, an artist's challenge is to find the subject's charm, style, dignity, and generosity of spirit. I've seldom had the privilege to work with a subject in whom those characteristics are so readily apparent. It has been my privilege to capture those attributes for this venerable institution, Memphis University School. Special thanks to Perry DeMent and Elizabeth Francis for facilitating and ensuring everything ran smoothly. Warmest regards, Grace DeVito. Now I would like to ask Dr. Dahl and his wife, Teresa, to join Mr. Sanders and me as we unveil the portrait. As the walls of the dining hall continue to become lined with the portraits of revered faculty members like Dr. Dahl, who have played important and influential roles in the lives of generations of students, we are constantly reminded of the primary reason we continue to appreciate and support Memphis University School. Dr. Dahl devoted his life to the students and to the school. His influence will continue to impact so many of us for years to come. On behalf of Memphis University School Alumni Executive Board, it is my pleasure to present to the school this portrait of Dr. Reginald Dahl. MUS board members, Headmaster Pete Sanders, Assistant Headmaster Bay Ray, Jason Fair, past president of the Alumni Executive Board, Andy McCarter, current president, Alumni Executive Board members, Advancement Director Perry Dement, faculty, staff, alumni, friends, family, portraitist Grace DeVito, special guest Preston Battle. Bill Taylor. I am deeply honored by your presence for the unveiling of my portrait this evening. Above all, I want to thank from the bottom of my heart 
the Alumni Executive Board for having selected me for the 2019 Faculty Portrait Series and for having given me the privilege to have my portrait displayed with those of my colleagues and friends here in the dining hall. There is a lot to say about them, my former colleagues here, but it will take too long to tell a story about each one of them. All of them are dear to me, and in the course of my 30 years of teaching here, all of them have, in one way or another, welcomed me into the MUS community. Now, I am part of their community here. Over there, they are my two mentors, John Springfield and Lee McQueen, who, in 1980, initiated me to what MUS was, what MUS is, what MUS would be, and what MUS should be. I will never forget the impact on my teaching. I also cannot forget my two dear headmaster, Mr. Gene Fawn, who hired me by simply saying, Reg, I trust you, you are professional. And Mr. Elise Good, who always supported me in my teaching and made me feel part of the MUS community. What an outstanding school MUS is. Its organization, its goals, its visions, and above all, its students. As we all know, MUS students are the backbone of MUS success, but it takes two to make it work, diverse students and diverse faculty. And I believe that my colleagues and I have succeeded in making MUS the success it is. Today, I am confident that my present colleagues are continuing this goal successfully. For me, beside teaching French, my goal was to open all students' eyes to the world beyond Shelby County and the USA, no matter whether they were studying Latin, French, or Spanish. Thanks to Coach T, Bill Taylor, my dear friend, in the late 80s, we started organizing trips to Europe. And thanks to the support of our headmaster, Elise Wood, in the late 1990, with Coach T, we changed from MUS in England to MUS in Europe. Today, what an opportunity is offered to the students to travel to MUS in Europe. Each year, the students are presented with a theme to pursue with a teacher who will help them discover art, literature, history, or the sciences. Today, MUS has 20 years of successful MUS in Europe trips, and I'm sure there are more to come. I feel privileged to have been part of this program. I'm thrilled to know that thanks to Matt Crump, a travel endowment was created last spring to help MUS students participate in school trips abroad. My hope is that MUS will enable all students before graduation to experience this eye opener beyond classrooms and books they are reading. Thanks for making me a part of MUS legacy and long live MUS.